Good morning, good morning, good morning, saints of God. You know, the Lord will make a way, won't he? He's always making a way. He's always there for us, day in and day out. And he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. The storms will arise, and we will go through ups and downs and trials in life. But God is always there. I say good morning to you here in Fresno in California, still morning. Back on the East Coast where my part of my family is watching this broadcast, isn't it? Uh, good afternoon to you. And maybe on other parts of the world, out in Germany, where maybe my grandkid is watching, it is good night, possibly. But we are here today just to celebrate again our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We are here to say thank you, Lord, for another week. Oh, yeah, we, we are uh, practicing uh, 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 separation. And, uh, but God will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. He will never leave us. He is right there with us. The Holy Spirit abides in every believer. And yes. he's not practicing any separation. <laughs> but we are being good to separate and keeping things right. But the word of God will persevere. Aren't you glad about that? And I want to welcome you to Mount Olive on this uh, one month now of live streaming. Uh, a month ago, we had a church pack with people. Today, there's three of us here. But that's all right, because God is in the midst. Amen? Yeah. I asked Minister Bobby McGee to come up and lead us in prayer and, and scripture today. And as we uh, prepare our hearts to hear from Almighty God. Amen. Good morning, people of God. I would like to share with you today this wonderful day. And I say this wonderful day because I would like to share with you out of Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 35 to 39. And it reads as it says, who shall separate us from the love of the Christ? Can tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? According as it has been written, for thy sake, we are put to death all day long. We are reckoned as sheep of slaughter. But in all these, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor messenger nor, pers nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things above, about, to be, nor heights, nor depth, nor any other creative thing shall be able to separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, yes. we thank you for another wonderful day despite of everything that is going on in this world, oh God. Yes. We thank you because we know, oh God, that you are still in control yes. of everything, especially our lives for those that trust you, oh God. Hmm. So Heavenly Father, as we stand here proclaiming your goodness, your presence, Heavenly Father, and your authority, we come in the name of Jesus Christ, on behalf of everything that's going on in this world, on behalf of your word, and we release it, Father God, through the power of your word, on behalf of these circumstances, thanking you, Heavenly Father, knowing that your word will not return void, but it will do that which you purpose it to do in our lives, Father God. So I ask you for every believer, Father God, that is in Christ Jesus, that you give us a desire, Heavenly Father, to continue to do that which is pleasing in your sight. And Heavenly Father, as Pastor Lee prepared to bring the word forth, I ask, O oh God, that every listener, that they be sensitive to hear what thus says the Lord as he proclaimed the word of the living God. And I ask, Lord, as you prepare his heart to speak, that you speak to him and through him without nothing missing or lacking in the name that's above all names, the name of Jesus, and let the wonderful people of God hear 
the ones present, the ones listening, let us all say amen. 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 Be like singing, I woke up this morning with a mind on Jesus. Same with Pastor. But I don't have the choir here, anybody to back me up, so we will just go right to the word. Again, turn with me to the book of Joshua. And we're going to look at a, a, a need that was needed then, and God promised that he would provide that. And also today, we need a need, we have a need that God is providing, and we want people to stand up to it. And I've just titled this. God need a strong man and a strong woman as well. But we need people of strength that will honor God and keep God. Keep God's commandments and keep God's word. Let me read a little bit from Joshua 24. We're going to look at a few verses there and then we're going to go over where we'll take our text from. We'll start with Joshua 24, verse 29. But look at how Joshua opened this letter. He says, then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called the elders of Israel for, the head, for their heads, for their judges, for their officers. They presented themselves before God and Joshua said to all the people, thus says the Lord God of Israel, for your fathers, in, uh, including Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river in old times, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from the other side to, uh, of the river and led him throughout the land uh, of Canaan and multiplied his descendants and gave him Isaac. And Isaac I gave Jacob and, to, and Esau. To Esau I gave the mountains of Seir to possess but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Also I sent Moses and Aaron and I, and I played Egypt according to that, excuse me, according to what I did among them. Afterwards I brought them out to you. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt and came to the sea. And the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horses to the Red Sea. So they cried out to the Lord, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, brought, to, brought the sea upon them, and covered them, and your eyes saw what, what I did to Egypt. Let's go down to verse 14. Now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. Then Joshua made this statement. And, and if it seemed evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yes. Verse 29. Now it came to pass after these things that Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. And they buried him within the borders of his inheritance. At Terminal Sarah, which is the mountain of Ephraim, on the north side of, the, of Mount Gesher. Israel, and verse 31 says, Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had known all the works of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. Amen. God was a strong men and some strong women. In chapter 1, as we open up this book, God is calling Joshua as the next leader. And he says, he, he admonished Joshua. He said, I, he told him, I'll, like I was with Moses, I'll be with you. But Joshua, be courageous and be strong. Saints of God, we need to be courageous in these times and be strong, not in muscles going to the gym, but strong in the word and in the faith of Almighty God. We look back over Joshua's life. 
Joshua came up out of Egypt. When, 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 and after spending all that time in Egypt as a young lad, God brought his children, he brought his people out with a strong hand. And some of the recollection was of Joshua's life that they came to the Red Sea. And, and Joshua, like many others, wondering how will they get over the sea. But God told Moses, just use what you have. Saints of God, sometimes we need to just use what we have. But my question to all of us, what do you have? Do you have the word of God? Is the word of God hidden in your heart? Do you have the confidence of knowing that you serve a risen Savior that tells you and me that no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper? Joshua saw with his own self, uh, in his own eyes, the, the working and the power of Almighty God. When the sea rolled up, and they walked across on dry land. I declare to you and to me, some of us, we haven't seen the Red Sea, but we've seen some seas in this old life roll up and we need to stop so we can walk across on dry land. Hmm. I was uh, having a dream, I think it was a dream, last week and it, and, and it carried me back through my childhood all up to this present time. He didn't tell me about all the bad stuff that I'd done, but God was showing me how he delivered me from this and from that and from that heartache and that pain and, 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 and that near-death experience. He, he, he showed me all what mom and dad had uh, went through to make sure their children and their grandchildren loved the Lord. I, I often say I was born on a Saturday and on Sunday they had me in church. But I found out that that was wrong because I was born on a Sunday. So it had to be the next Sunday they had me in church. <laughs> They drug us, as some would say, to church. There was no excuse for not getting into the Word of God, learning the Word of God. But most importantly, Mama and Daddy prayed for us. And I'm here to tell you, we have some, uh, she has some good children that are serving the kingdom of God. Even right now, some great-grandchildren that are living for God. Amen? Amen? We need to raise up our kids in the truth and in the love of Almighty God. And as I was sharing that, I called my younger brother... And we started talking about this and about that, and we began to laugh about some things, and I shared it with my thoughts about how God had carried me back, and, and he laughed, and I thought I, thought I was you know, having a, a midlife crisis, or God was showing me, showing me my, uh, my life in front of me, and I was going to pass on, but that wasn't the case. He was just reminding me, and he reminded my brother at the same time, because my brother was going through some of the same things, that I was with you back there, and I'll be with you today. Joshua went through some of the same things and we need to go through those things to know and understand the power of Almighty God and how much God loves us. I'm afraid today some of us have uh, uh, put God away and, and we only call on him when we think we need him. Hmm. I did something yesterday I haven't done in probably 10 or 12 years. I washed my own truck. <laughs> I, I've been in the habit of driving through car washes and doing everything that uh, let them do everything, but when it came down to doing my own washing of my truck, I could see every little scratch and how small it was. You see things. And, and, and if I had allowed them to wash it, I would have never inspected it like that. I wouldn't have looked in, to see any flaws or anything like this. But when I washed it, you could see it. Sometimes we just need to get close enough to the Word of God. Don't let the preacher just keep preaching it to you. But you need to be in the Word of God for yourself. Your Sunday school teachers, they're not with you right now. Except through the uh, medium of, 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 uh, of this age of electronics. But let me tell you, you need to be in the Word for yourself. Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. That's good. Another thing I did as I was washing my truck, I saw something that I had never seen on this truck. My spare tire. I happened to just look under that. Oh, there it is. I knew where it should have been, but I had never seen it before. And what I did, I began to ponder. Now, I know what the air pressure is on the tires that's on the ground, but I was wondering if I needed that spare. Is there any air in that tire? And I have no clue to this day if there's any air in that tire because I didn't crawl under the truck to check it. And I'm afraid that many of you don't even know where your spare tire is or your jack is if you need it. And I say this to say that. Say that to say this. That many of you do not know the word of God enough mm -hmm. that when you need it, you can't proclaim it. Amen. 
You cannot stand and say like Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, because it is written. You cannot stand up and, and, and proclaim to your children and to your grandchildren or to your co-workers the word of God when it needs to be proclaimed because it's like that spare tire tucked away that you don't even know if they have any air in it or not. And many of us don't even know where it's located. We need to know and understand the word of God. We need to get into the word of God. We need to understand it. Joshua could be that strong man, that courageous man, because he loved God and he understood the word of God. Yes, yes. God spoke to him. He had been upon the mountaintop with Moses when the Ten Commandments were written. He had been through the wilderness with Moses. He was one of the t uh, 12 spies that went out and, and said, I'm going into the promised land and you will find this and you will find that. Uh, Joshua and Caleb were the only two out of the 12 that came back and said, God, is, and he's right. Everything is as God said it would be. The yeah. other ten said, no, we can't do it. Let me tell you something. The ten was right. We couldn't do it. But with God, all things are possible. Hmm. We need to be like that strong man, Joshua and Caleb, knowing that God can work a perfect work in all of our lives. And as we go through this, Joshua did something else in 2415. He reminded the people prior to that the workings of God in our lives. I've had to re be reminded how God worked in my life. And you can look back if you want to and see how God has worked in your life. But he's kept us. He watched over us. Some of our loved ones have transitioned on into glory. Yes. But he has kept us. He watched over us. He has given peace to us in the middle of our storm. This uh, COVID-19, this coronavirus, sometimes we get so afraid that we don't leave out the house. We don't do anything. We are, we are stuck. We are not even going to our backyard because we are believing that even the virus is going through the air and we breathe it. But we don't put our confidence and trust in a risen God. I'm not saying to go out without your mask or no. I'm not saying don't wash your hands. Yeah, wash your hands. I am saying to us today, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understandings, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He'll tell you when you can go out and sit in your backyard. He'll tell you when you can cut your grass. He'll tell you when you can uh, go to the grocery store. He'll lead you and guide you. And most importantly, we need to tell somebody else about the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. When we are closed on the, closed down and on the inside, stuck with ourselves, then we can't be the mighty missionaries that God has called us to be. Joshua was one of those strong men that the church needs today. One of those strong ladies like Esther was and like... Deborah was, and so many others were. God needs some strong saints that have the full armor of God on, that's ready to stand up against the wiles of Satan, ready to uh, 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 go and do what God has called us to do. But I'm afraid we are lacking in so many areas. And the main thing, we don't pray like we used to pray. We don't trust like we used to trust. And therefore, we can't lead like we used to lead. Our foreparents taught us well how to trust God and how to live for God. But our kids these days, and I'm going to say that, we were talking about it a little earlier as I move on. We have too many of our young boys, not boys anymore, some of them are 20 and 25 and 30. Only thing they know how to do is get and is father a child, but, uh, but they don't take care of their families or their children. Too many are not working, depending on the ladies. And right now, there's no work for anybody, Holly. But we need to raise up some strong men that will, first of all, before they come together for sexual uh, pleasures, they will get married and they will raise a family in the fear and admonition of Almighty God. We've lost that. And God is speaking to us strongly. He's speaking to the United States. He's speaking to the world. I don't care what little G God you might be worshiping, but there is a God in heaven that spoke and the whole world came into existence. Right. That same God will come back one day and call all of his people home. You might be worshiping this little G God or that little G God. You might be worshiping, worshiping the rivers and the stream. But one day, we all have to give an account to Almighty God. Yes. And I'm telling you, if you're loving Jesus, no matter what comes up, you have joy that's unspeakable. Mm -hmm. Paul would say this way, have rejoice. And he said, I rejoice and again say rejoice. No matter what's going on in our life, we can sing hallelujah song. We can praise him. We can fall on our knees and say, Lord, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. Yes. And in verse 29, when, when Joshua now, 110 years 
Shiloh. He began to call all of Israel. He called them all together. This is a strong man. And he began to talk to them. And he's going to die now. And he's telling them what they need to do. He's telling them uh, which way to move now and how to keep their focus on Almighty God. And the Bible says, and Joshua died and was buried. Our Yeshua, our Jesus the Christ, he came into this world. He lived and died. He was buried and rose again on that third day. But he got up from the grave as the first fruits of all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And he's telling us the grave have no power, the death have no uh, power over believers anymore. We can live for him. Saints, it's time to live for him. It's time to talk to our brothers and our sisters. It's time to love one another, care for one another, be there for one another. And I like what verse 31 ended up, ended up with. And all the days of Joshua, people were trusting God. And no weapon formed against them prospered. And even after Joshua passed on, the elders, the older ones that lived on after Joshua, they kept trusting in the Lord. Wouldn't it be something if America, if Mount Olive, if the children of God just kept on trusting in the Lord? He needed a few strong men. That's not the army. But we are soldiers of Almighty God. Amen? That's not the Marines. It's not the Air Force. But it's the body of Christ that need to stand up and proclaim the good news story. Yes. There are people out there that are hungry. The church needs to stand up. I thank God we're still distributing food and people are coming to get food. They came by last Friday to get food. We ran out of food. You look at the lines from Tennessee all over the country. There are lines of people who are trying to get food that have never been in a line in the, in, to receive food in their life. But now, because there are no jobs, no income, they are, they are looking to get subsistence from wherever they might be able to get it from. Church, Jesus is our answer. We need to give them food, but we need to give them the word of God. Give them some hope. Let them know that we're still in that season when Christ got up from the grave. He began to walk this earth again after rising from the grave for 40 days. Then on that 40th day, the Bible says he caught a cloud up off the mountaintop of the, of, 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 and went on into glory. But it's the same God, church, that is coming back again. He has given us a mandate, starting in Jerusalem and going to Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. And tell them about the love of Jesus Christ, the one that gave his life so that we might live. Yes. He died so that we might have hope. He died so that no virus or nothing can pull us away from God. Minister Mitchell uh, McGee uh, read that uh, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Hmm. Nothing. God loves us. And if the virus comes, he allowed it. And we need to understand what God is doing. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus. Saints, I want you to just enjoy life. Enjoy what God has given you. Enjoy the aches and the pains that might be in your body. They're in mine. Tomorrow, I was scheduled to have on the 20th, which is, would be tomorrow. I was scheduled to have total knee replacement. That has been postponed. So I don't have to go through that pain tomorrow. But maybe down the road, I still will have to do that. But in the meantime, even if I was going tomorrow, I still know that God was totally in control. And we trust God. Yes. Let me pray for us. Oh, yes. Father, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love for your people, Heavenly Father. Matter of fact, you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever will believe in you should not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, we don't know when we ever come back together as a, a group as a local congregation. But Lord, in the meantime, we will keep on running for you. We will keep telling a dying and sin-sick world about the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, give us every avenue. Open it up. Let us know what we need. Every airway, every time, whether it's Zoom or Facebook or YouTube, wherever it might be, whatever you chose, allow us to use. May we proclaim you that will reach around the world. 
Because this whole world is coming to an end. Yeah. It's going to soon be over. Hmm. We haven't seen anything yet. But one day, when the eastern sky is open and the dead in Christ rise first, and then those that remain shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We'll be caught up with you in the sky. Oh Lord, what a day of that will be when we'll behold your face. We'll see you. We will see you. And we look forward to that day. But in the meantime, we're going to trust you, Lord. Until we meet again, until we see each other again, keep our trust in Almighty God. Hallelujah and amen. Just want to let you know, I want to thank each and every one of you for being so faithful to coming around, helping make sure the building is still clean and, and, and uh, 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 work is still going on to make sure everything is propped up. Thank you also for your tithes and your offerings. And many of you are mailing them in and some are bringing them in. Some are coming by the house, dropping them off, and I'm bringing them in. Whatever you choose to do, thank God for what the ministry is still going on. We're still feeding. We're still sending. We're still doing what God called us to do. The avenues in which uh, we're using, of course, is mail. Give a buy. Uh, uh, give likely is the uh, electronic way we are using right now. We are getting our Facebook uh, 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 website uh, up and running so you can give through that. Or you can mail it to 101 West Clinton in Fresno, California, 93722. Whatever you choose to do. Or you can call the office. We're in the office every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 to 1. Drop it by. Whatever you choose to do, we thank you for it. Remember, God is faithful and God is good. Amen? God bless you. God keep you. And may his love continue to rain down in your life. Stay sheltered in. Be safe. But remember, God is with you. Hallelujah. Until we meet again, good night, goodbye, see you later. Wonderful message.